Welcome back, everyone. In this week's episode of History Behind the Fine, we are going to discuss a coin star fine of mine, a World War II civilian ration token. For those of you that aren't familiar with the coin star gig, I'll fill you in. Most grocery stores have a machine that you can turn change into cash. Most of the population don't know, but for some reason, the machine rejects silver coins, foreign coins, and anything odd. Most people do their business, leave without ever checking the eject tray. Us diggers love to check them for the occasional treasure. Okay, back on track. During the Second World War, you couldn't just walk into a shop and buy as much sugar, butter, or meat as you wanted, nor could you fill up your car with, with as much gasoline whenever you liked. All these things were rationed, which meant you were only allowed to buy a small amount even if you could afford more. The government introduced rationing because certain things were in short supply during the war, and rationing was the only way to make sure everyone got their fair share. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor dramatically ended the debate on America's entrance into the war that raged around the world. As eager volunteers flooded local draft board offices, ordinary citizens soon felt the impact of the war. Almost overnight, the economy shifted to war production. Consumer goods now took a backseat to military production as nationwide rationing began almost immediately. In May of 1942, the U.S. Office of Price Administration, OPA, froze prices on practically all everyday goods, starting with sugar and coffee. War ration books and tokens were issued to each American family dictating how much gasoline, tires, sugar, meat, silk, shoes, nylon, and other items any one person could buy. Across the country, 8,000 rationing boards were created to administer these restrictions. A wartime edition of the American Woman's Cookbook contained revised recipes and gave advice on dealing with food shortages. Types of rationing, including uniform coupon rationing, sugar is, is an example, provided equal shares of single commodity to all consumers. Point rationing provided equivalent shares of commodities by coupons issued for points, which could be spent for any combination of items in the group. Pro processed foods, meats, fats, cheese. Differential coupon rationing provided shares of a single product according to varying needs, gasoline, fuel, oil and certificate rationing allowed individual products only after an application demonstrated need tires, cars, stoves, typewriters. The following is an emergency statement to the people of the United States published by the U.S. War Production Board on April 20, 1942. The steel industry has been rapidly stepping up its production, but we need to get production up to the industry's full capacity of 900 million tons of total equal to the output of the rest of the world combined. This volume of production cannot be attained or increased unless an additional 6 million tons of scrap iron and steel is obtained properly. We are faced with the fact that some steel furnaces have been allowed to cool down and many of them are operating from day to day and hand to mouth due to only a lack of scrap. The rubber situation is also critical. In spite of the recent rubber drive, there is a continued need for large quantities of scrap rubber. We are collecting every possible pound from factories, arsenals, and shipyards. We are speeding up the flow of material from automobile graveyards. We are tearing up abandoned railroad tracks and bridges, but unless we dig out an additional 6 million tons of steel and great quantities of rubber, copper, brass, zinc, and tin, our boys may not get all the fighting weapons they need in time. Even one old shovel will help make four hand grenades. As an obvious history buff myself, History about World War II and any aspect of it is definitely on top of my list. I've watched countless documentaries on every single genre of the war, from German leadership to every known battle. Knowing what it took to overcome such evil and not just what our troops did, but what our country did as a whole to defeat the Axis powers, makes me tremendously proud to be an American and forever grateful for the sacrifices made by so many during World War II. It truly was our best generation. Remember, it's not just what we find, but what we find out. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.